Hi everyone. Today we'll be discussing about the principle behind polarography. So before we're going to discuss about the principle behind polarography, we need to know what is polarography. Polarography is actually is an electrochemical method of analysis. So before getting into the principle, we need to know what is meant by electrochemical methods and uh, we'll see briefly about different electroanalytical methods. So let's start. Electrochemical methods of analysis. Electrochemical methods are analytical techniques that use measurement of potential, charge or current to determine analyte's concentration or to characterize an analyte's chemical activity. So these are analytical methods that measure either of this parameter to find this analyte concentration. So moving on to the different analytical methods. The different analytical methods are potentiometry, colometry, voltammetry, conductometry, amperometry. There are mainly five electroanalytical methods. So let's see each what each one is. Okay. So potentiometry. It measures the difference in electrode potential or we can say voltage by maintaining a constant current between the electrodes. That means in potentiometry we are measuring the voltage or we can say electrode potentials. Next, the second method is colometry. In colometry we are measuring the cell's current. We are measuring the current over the time. Next is voltammetry. In voltammetry, cell's current is measured while actively altering the cell's potential. So, we will be applying the voltage at different rates and we will be measuring the current. So, the polarography, polarography is a subtype of voltammetry. So, we can say it utilizes polarography, it utilizes a liquid metal electrode. Conductometry. Next one is conductometry and it measures the conductance by keeping a constant AC between the electrodes. And the last electroanalytical method is amperometry and it monitors the electric current that is measured in ampere by keeping the potential constant. The names of the Names of the methods reflect measured electric property or its units. So these are the main electrochemical methods of analysis. And among these, we are going to discuss about polarography and it comes under voltammetry. So we are going to discuss about polarography. What's the principle behind polarography? We have seen already that polarography is a branch of voltammetry. Next, moving on to the definition of polarography, we can say that it is an electrochemical technique that measure the current flowing between two electrodes in the solution and gradually increasing applied voltage to determine the concentration of the solute and its nature. So, since this is an analytical technique, we are going to measure the concentration of the analyte by measuring the current between two electrodes by increasing, gradually increasing the applied voltage. That is polarography. Or we can say it as, it is the technique in which the electric potential or we can say the voltage is varied in a regular manner between two sets of electrodes that is indicator and reference electrodes while the current is monitored. So from this we can understand that in polarography we are measuring the current by applying varying voltage or electric potential between two electrodes. So in polarography there will be two sets of electrodes that is indicator electrodes and reference electrodes. 
So this polarographic technique is invented by a Czech chemist, Jaslav Herskovsky, and the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1959 was awarded to him for the discovery and development of the polarographic method of analysis. So next is principle of polarography. Polarography is carried out with the help of two electrodes. These two electrodes are reference electrode and indicator electrode. A gradually increasing voltage or we can say potential is applied between these two electrodes that is a gradually increasing voltage is applied between reference and indicator electrodes and the corresponding current is measured. So in polarography we are measuring the current by applying varying voltage between reference and indicator electrodes. So let's see what is reference and indicator electrodes. So the first one is reference electrode. This electrode has a comparatively large surface area and non-polarizable electrode. That is, it remains a constant potential throughout the measurement. This is generally act as an anode and saturated kilomole electrode that is an example example for reference electrode is saturated kilomole electrode so this reference electrode has got a large surface area and it is a non polarizable electrode that means it its potential will be constant throughout the measurement an example for reference electrode is saturated kilomole electrode so we have seen what is reference electrode now we'll see what is indicator electrode. Indicator electrode has a comparatively small surface area and it is polarized. That means it adopts a potential extremely imposed on it. So that means its potential will be corresponding to the concentration of the analyte present. It acts as cathode and is a dropping mercury electrode. So an example for indicator electrode is dropping mercury electrode. This is also called as micro electrode or working electrode. So this indicator electrode can be also called as micro electrode or working electrode. Dropping mercury electrode is an example for indicator electrode. So I have done a video about the construction working of dropping mercury electrode. So polarography can be distinguished from potentiometry. In potentiometry, the potential difference between the two electrodes is measured while the current flowing between the electrodes is held constant. In potentiometry, the current flowing between the electrode is constant, but in polarography, we are measuring the current by keeping the voltage in a varying amounts. So in polarography we are measuring the current and the current which flows through the cell depends upon the concentration and nature of the reducible or oxidizable species in the solution. Polarography involves the study of the correlation between the electric current passing through the cell and the voltage applied between the electrodes. The graphical representation of measurement that is in polarography we are measuring the current by applying varying voltage that is the graphical representation is called as polarogram and the apparatus used for this measurement is called as polarograph. So the graphical representation of current versus voltage is called as polarogram and the apparatus is called polarograph. From the current voltage curve that is usually the shape of the curve is sigmoid shape. 
qualitative and quantitative analysis can be performed so from this graph we can find out a qualitative and quantitative analysis the polarograph increases the applied voltage at a steady rate and records the current voltage curve called polarograph so you can see this a b portion this is a residual current and b c portion is a diffusion current and c d portion is a limiting current in a b portion the residual current it is very low and this b c portion is called diffusion current and this last part of the polarogram is called the limiting current so in the first part of the polarogram that is ab portion it is called a residual current it is denoted by ir so in this portion ab the current is small and varies linearly with applied voltage the initial slow increase in current at the foot of the wave is known as residual current now now moving on to the second part of the curve that is bc portion that is called diffusion current or we can say id near the point b the current begins to increase sharply with increasing applied voltage this forms the polarographic curve or wave this portion bc represents the diffusion current the diffusion current id is the distance between the limiting current and residual current the potential at the mid point of the wave where the current is exactly half the limiting value is known as half wave potential the last part of the polarogram is the cd portion that is called the limiting current il so along the cd there is no increase in current is observed at higher potential the current is limited by the rate of transport of reducible cations to the electrode beyond a certain potential the current reaches a steady value known as limiting current so the limiting current is proportional to the concentration of reduced or oxidized species so finally the ilkovic equation so what is ilkovic equation is that it is a relation used in polarography relating the diffusion current and concentration c so it is denoted by the equation id that is diffusion current is equal to 0.607 nf cd raised to half m raised to 2 by 3 t raised to 1 by 6 where we'll see what are the constants id is a diffusion current n is the number of electrons involved in the electro reaction f is a faraday's constant c is a bulk concentration of the electroactive substances and d is a diffusion coefficient m is a mercury flow rate t is a drop time so using this ilkovic equation we can find the concentration of the analyte so this ilkovic equation plays an important role in the quantitative analysis in polarography hope you like the video thank you